We said that if we ever go to Korea, we'll all get a tattoo. Stop it. <laughs> what do you mean? And finally at like a hundred percent, my fiance's in the bathtub. I said, babe, can you stay with me while I sh talk an elderly woman? So, uh, hello. say hello. <laughs> He's like, well, where do you want me to go? I said, just get in the tub. Just get in the tub. He's like, do you know what pars hanging means? It's what like when it? you're in timeout. <laughs> and I feel like you look like you're in timeout or something. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get ready. I have like 20 minutes before my grandma comes upstairs. And we're meeting my grandma today. I think the last time I saw her was the last time I vlogged while I was in Korea. And I saw both of my grandmas. I saw my mom's mom, who has sadly since passed. And then I am seeing my dad's mom today. She's my last remaining biological grandma. I have a step-grandma, but I don't talk to her. Anyway, long story. Long story. story that time. It's, yeah, it's gonna be a whole story time right now because I've got really mixed feelings about this whole thing. But I just want to say, my mom is an MVP. Okay, my mom is the MVP. And after we meet my grandma, I'm gonna take her on a shopping spree at Olive Young because she's been dying to go. I've been dying to go. And in the wonderful words of our Queen Lisa, we came here to drop some money. Okay, and maybe I can go to like a market afterwards. I want to get people some gifts. And then maybe go do some other types of shopping. I have no idea. We're also getting a tattoo tomorrow. So it's a whole thing, right? But every something that has been happening nearly every single day. Do you have your phone on you? No. With something that has been happening nearly every single day since we've gotten here. And I think it's because we're so busy carrying so many things. Like we have the vlog camera, a big camera that I'm making him carry so that he can do B-rolls of me. We're just carrying so many things that we have been dropping our phones almost every single day in public. And I guess, I don't know why, people look kind of shocked when we drop our phones. And then it makes me feel uncomfortable. Like. I'm shocked that I dropped my phone and I'm like, I know my phone is fine, why am I shocked? Which is why I'm gonna tell every Korean I know to get a case to five phone case, okay? I dropped my phone in the lobby, I dropped my phone in the airport, I mean everywhere, and I kind of dropped it really, really hard because our phone case is basically indestructible. This baby right here is the case to five bounce case. If you're clumsy like me, this is your new soulmate. It's got expanded corners that allow your phone to simply bounce. So anytime it drops, you can visually see it bounce. I'm even gonna get rid of this bath mat, okay? And then you're totally fine, like not even a scratch on the case. It's their new EcoShock impact absorption technology that helps it drop up to 21.3 feet in the air, which is insane. Like I have to work really hard to drop it that high. I just dropped it again. If you think your phone case is gonna look super ugly because of that, you have no fear. Case Defy has over 2,000 prints to choose from and they're curated by a global network of artists. I think that they work with over like 300 artists from around the world, so there's really just something for everyone, which I like that there's even a lot of South Korean artists that they work with. And if you're not feeling any of that, you can even customize your phone case the way that you want. I think it's so cute because my phone is like an accessory to my outfit, you know what I mean? Like, I like taking pictures with it. I like taking selfies with my phone case. It just adds to the whole aesthetic. And Casetify cares about sustainability. They have a re program that helps recycle old phone cases, and their phone cases are made out of 65% recycled material. Make sure to check out casetify.com slash mango to get 15% off your new favorite phone case. That's casetify.com slash mango to get 15% off your new favorite phone case. And thank you, Casetify, for sponsoring today's video. And let's do my hair. If I were back at home, I would go out like this. I'm meeting with my dad's mom, my hair money today. She's been living in Korea for a while. And last time I met her is very different from this time that I'm meeting her for some reason. Just the vibes are different. I have an interesting relationship with my dad's mom, with my grandma, I guess. This is the same grandma that I share with Dan Dan. So she used to live in America. She was one of the grandmas that helped raise me. My mom came to Korea maybe like um, a year and a half ago to pick up her mom's ashes, her own mom. And this is her mother-in-law. She came and met with her mother-in-law, which I thought was crazy. Because growing up, I don't know if you, I've told you guys this, but my harmony was so mean to my mom. I think it's a Korean thing, and I'm sure even out of the Koreans, she was one of the more extreme cases, but I remember my mom being miserable every single second of every single day that we lived with my grandparents from that side. Just, I mean, she was forced to do the most ridiculous things ever. She said that every single day, she had to set the table with all panchans like 10 times a day. 
10 times a day. And you're like, why, why 10 times a day? So she would have to set it three times a day for my grandparents and they would eat at different times from me and my sister because my sister and I had school. So we'd come home from school, but they'd already eaten. So then my mom would have to set the table for me. And then if she didn't set the table with a bunch of side dishes, my grandma would yell at her like, why are you so bad to your kids? Why are you feeding them this? Like, why don't you feed them this and that and this? And, like, why are you a horrible mother? That's crazy. And then she would have to set the table for my dad. But then my dad's side of the family started using my mom as almost like a restaurant. So her two oh. daughters would come over to hang out with their mom and my mom would have to set the table again. Why is that kind of normal back then? Yeah, so I think back then, you know, I think especially like maybe an East Asian house and back then it's a very patriarchal society. So the men rule the house. And I guess because the mother the mother-in-law feels like that's my son. I can tell my son what to do. They just go out and do some crazy shit, I tell you. I think a lot of Chinese families like that too. Back really? Then. Tensions between mom and daughter-in-law. Yeah, and then you have to live together, right? Back in the day. Back then, I mean, it was more customary to live with your mother-in-law as a daughter-in-law. And so she was just using and abusing my mom to the point where my mom wanted to leave my dad because of how miserable she was. Not even just with him, but the fact that he wasn't really standing up for her and the fact that, you know, she was just miserable in general. It was a shit show. It was so, so bad. And I think that's why I have a love-hate relationship with my grandma because I love her so much because of how much she loves my dad. She would die for my dad. She would do anything for my dad. For example, the reason that she's in Korea when all of her three kids are in the U.S. She's got great grandkids in the U.S. now, you know? Back then, times were different, you know? Back then, times were different. My parents were able to get visas into the U.S., and my grandma couldn't, so she came on a visitor visa to the U.S., which means you can stay for 90 days as a vacation, and then she just didn't end up ever going back. And technically, she didn't need to work, and so nobody really... Not that they didn't find out, but she wasn't taking any, like, social security benefits or anything like that. Like, she wasn't on government assistance. She was just, like, our family was supporting her, and she stayed in the U.S. The reason that she came back to Korea is my dad came back, and he got really, really sick. In Korea? In Korea. So your dad was in Korea alone? Yes. Really, really sick? And then my grandma was like, I'm going to go back for my son. And everyone was telling her, if you go back... The U.S. is not going to let you in for 10 years. Your son, my dad, can go back and forth from the U.S. to Korea anytime he wants, but you will be stuck in Korea for 10 years. And she packed a bag and came. And so it's like, oh, it's so hard. I can't hate her. She came and like, she's like this old little lady. <laughs> She didn't stay with my dad. Um, they were staying in different parts because she has a bunch of sisters, which I think recently her sister passed away a few days ago. So she's staying with her sisters and every single week she would make all these side dishes, like all these nutritious side dishes. She would pack them in one of those granny carts and take a subway for an hour to go drop it off with my dad. And she like never wants anything from my dad, never wants anything in return. I mean, she literally will die for my dad in a heartbeat but she was kind of evil to my mom. And it's uh, it's really weird. But you know, I think that- That was I, back then, right? That was back then. Oh, she's so nice to my mom now. And it's, it's confusing. I think maybe she realizes. She's never formally apologized, but I don't think that's in like Korean nature to apologize, you know? But I, I do think she knows what's weird. I don't know why. I, I feel like she just thought that my mom wasn't a good, capable mother. Because my mom's not a very traditional Korean mom. She was more free with raising us. She wanted us to kind of do our own thing. And I think maybe that kind of stressed her out. But I think now it's hard for her to say anything because we turned out alive, at least. <laughs> if anything, I just have so much respect for my mom. The fact that my mom is like downstairs in the lobby waiting for her to get here by the taxi right now. It's like this woman has put her through so much. Even when she talks about the past, she gets very like teary-eyed, she gets very emotional, she gets riled up. But then she'll go and see my grandma. 
And then she'll feel bad for my grandma because my grandma looks so elderly and sick. Which, side note, my grandma's a 10-year <laughs> deportment <laughs> ends next year, so she's going to be able to come into the U.S. <laughs> uh, legally this time. Woo! <laughs> so she's going to be back home in like um, a year. And it's kind of sad. She keeps calling my dad and she's pretty sick and very old and she keeps telling my dad just one more year, one more year. And that's another reason my sister and I have a very complicated relationship is because she is technically the only great grandparent to Sophia and Mia, which I think it's crazy. I've never met my great grandparents because they mm -hmm. sadly passed before I met them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've met your great grandparents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting. <laughs> <笑>あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、
teeth hurt. I know, oh, I'm surprised. She can still eat everything. <laughs> this is the restaurant. This pancake is to die for. The seafood pancake. The best seafood pancake yeah. we've ever had. I think it's because it's egg based mm. instead of flour. It's not doughy at no, all, but, but it's, it's crunchy. It's crunchy and they put giant pieces of shrimp in here. And See, like even grandma's killing it. Oh yeah. <laughs> She likes it. And she doesn't even like seafood pancakes? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the food is keep coming right now. Grandma feels like she's being force fed. <laughs> They're just shoving more and more food in front of her. <laughs> They just brought in another bowl of cold noodles and grandma doesn't know what to do anymore. <laughs> I don't know what to do either. This We're grilling more barbecue. Like, and there's another plate of kind of meat. There's more meat over there. So we're asking them to take everything to go. And apparently it's not a normal thing in Korea. So, okay, at a, like a restaurant like this, I guess, it's like a sign of lower class. Is that true, Oma? Yes. Oma, it's true? Chuba. Can you tell your grandma there's like three more dishes coming? Just to see her reaction. My mom and my grandma are going back to the hotel to get uh, some of the stuff that my grandma forgot that my dad had packed her. <laughs> it's somewhere in one of the suitcases. And we are headed to do some gift shopping because I feel a little bit down after that. Whoa! Can do you want a coffee? Yeah. Check it out. I have a sneaking suspicion that I need coffee after every meal here because <laughs> it's been so good. I'm so silly. Can you vlog this? I was waiting, just staring at the barista because I didn't realize I'm supposed to order on this thing, okay? Cool down. Okay, that's to go. Here you go. An iced Americano, right? Do you want a shot? Like a no, shot no. or just an Americano? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few moments later. I think I ordered coffee. What the hell, babe? <laughs> what are we doing with this big jug of coffee? This is the biggest coffee I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this thing Two dollars. Two dollars and fifty cents. What? Well, yeah, we're staying up all night, babes. That's like a super soaker drink from 7-Eleven. That's a Slurpee. That's a Slurpee <laughs> size. You're right. There's probably four shots of espresso in here. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you're Jesus. right. I should not have done this. Thing, but I think we're so dumb. I don't know, but I feel like I'm in a K drama right now. I feel like we're on a date. We're getting some iced coffee. The sun. The vibe. Watch out! <laughs> oh, that was my movie moment. Let me explain what happened. I went into that little bookstore and it felt like a daycare in there. It was very confusing. I couldn't vlog because there were kids in there and I didn't want to do that. But I'm looking at these books and I go in and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy like one or two books for Sophie and Mia. And they tell me, no, you can only buy it in a set. But these books are so good. They're better than American books. And each books. set is like, 20 no, no. bucks. Yeah, each set is 20 bucks, okay? And I'm thinking, these are really good books. They've got animations, they've got Korean and English ones, which is perfect. So I'm like, mm, yeah, I'll take the whole set, 20 books. Let me buy a new suitcase for the kids. I asked her, how much is set? And she said, I was like, $50? For a whole set of books? Bro, that is worth a checked in luggage. And I'm like, I'll take like three sets. And I'm looking at my fiance and he's looking at me like I'm crazy. And I say, no, that's such a good price, honey. No, no, like, no, we no. Should... I'm saying, yeah. let's think about it. And I was saying, we should just get it because it's such a good price. Now all of a sudden they're like, Oh, we can sell half a set. <laughs> and for half a set, it's like something, yeah. something, right? And yeah. then we left. We're like, okay, we'll think about it. We'll ask Oma and, and, and come back. 
And then as soon as we step out, I was like, wow, babe, that's pricey. And then Stephanie's like, oh my god, it's $500 for a set. <laughs> they gave me a book, and the very back of the book, there's a set for $700. And I was like, wait a minute, that means that whole set was not $50. It was $500. How did I understand that? And you thought it was $50. Yeah. I gotta call my mom and tell her not to come because when I was in that store, he was like, let's think about it. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna call my mom and we're gonna buy all the sets because are you kidding? We can buy like two sets for $75. Bruh. Kind of stumble across a park. It's so cute. It looks kind of cute. There's a map. Um, is there anything cool in here? Oh, there's a graveyard. I, thought that's I feel like it's probably a lot of cool dead people. Like, you have to be special to be buried here. So we're going to the park. 12 seconds later. Maybe it's not a vibe. Yeah, maybe it's not maybe for us. Not. Do you see that? Do you see? It looks glorious. And I kind of want to go to that Starbucks. For more coffee? No, 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 no. Oh, genius. Okay, this is so smart. And this cart is so cute and it's so ergonomic. No, let me, let me tell you, they were making fun of my hair at the place. Simply. They were not making fun of it, but they were being nice about it. But when they were brushing through, they were looking at each other, and I saw the look in their eyes of oh, like... they're not. Why is your hair really like this? Yeah, I know. They got a little cockroach. Gotta keep them little Nintendos up. In China, there's a character that's really famous. Everybody knows. For he having has, Nintendo. He has three hairs only. <laughs> He's so cute. You want to see what he looks like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Go away. My mom is crazy, my mom is crazy, and she's running to make this light. Okay, I'm on an outing with my mom, just the two of us, because we're trying to go to another Olive Young, because I didn't take my mom to one. She had to go back to the hotel with my grandma. And now, I'm in charge of the directions. My neighbor map is not correct, it's not even. I don't even know where we're going, but my mom is going, so I'm following her. We made it, and it's right next to a fatty bucket, so maybe I'll bring home my fiance some bread. Oh, hopefully this one has all the stuff we're looking for. Guys, I'm trying this. This is so viral on TikTok that, that, that some Olive Young stores, this is completely sold out. Oh my god, even this TikTok on here. I'm breaking out. It has, no, it smells like tea tree oil. Kind of, I don't know if it's in my head. Does it sting or does it burn? Oh, there's two in here. These are very fancy. So apparently these are pimple patches that have, um, that have like needles with some sort of medicine. That was easy. Moment of truth. We're gonna go to sleep. It says to keep this on for at least two hours. Better if I sleep in it. I will see you guys in the morning. I'm so tired. Good night. Good morning. I just brushed my teeth at 6.30. What? Does it look bigger? I feel like it's still there. I don't know why I was imagining it'd be gone. Oh. But, but it looks flatter. See, I had a pimple too, right? Uh -huh. Last night. I didn't do anything. Now it's gone. I got scared. Uh, Stephanie's on the phone with Cindy right now. Cindy, do you know where we're going right now? Mm -hmm. You want to take a guess? Something that all three of us are doing. Oh my god, dressing up in humbugs? <laughs> no, 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 no. Much more exciting. We're all getting tattoos right now, including <laughs> mommy. Don't lie. I'm not. No f***ing lying. We made a promise, I think three years ago in LA. We said that if we ever go to Korea, we'll all get a tattoo. Stop it. <laughs> what do you mean, stop it? But I'm, stop it. No, I'm serious. I'm dying of cramps, though. Oh. I literally want to chuck myself out this right now. <laughs> okay, let's go get tattoos! <laughs> I just learned this. I didn't know this, but apparently being a tattoo artist in Korea is still illegal. What do you mean? If the cops don't really come for you. I mean, there's Korean celebrities with tattoos these days. But if your occupation is a tattoo artist, it's technically illegal. You're sh but they said back in the day, like when competition was really tough because not as many people were getting tattoos, she said that sometimes really evil tattoo artists would report you to the cops, like your competition. Oh. And then you would have to like pay a fine. When she just said that, my mom goes, oh. I'm like, <laughs> she's like, the FBI's coming. We're walking into the tattoo building. I mean, once this door opens. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're a change woman. <laughs>
Do you want to go first or you want Oma to go first? But yours is quick. Oma, do you get on that with you? I'm dead. She's showing me like cursive ones because I think they're prettier, but I want it um like as simple as possible. I love her parrots. One of them it has red. Her name is Chili. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
So in China. Okay. <laughs> and then chapter one. And then chapter two is in America. And then chapter three is with the love of his life. Is in hell. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. also, since oh. I just turned 30, yes. the goal is every 10 years I can add a comma. Oh. Yeah. And then when I die, yeah. just add a period. A period! I'm obsessed with my tattoo. That's the wrong finger. <laughs> Bro. I genuinely love it. She was amazing. She made me feel so peaceful, made me feel so calm. Like, listen, if you told me that I had to go and get a tattoo, I probably would have myself this morning. I will say this, I was exhausted after the tattoo. I almost fell asleep on her couch and she told me that first time tattooers, sometimes it's common for you to get super sleepy afterwards because all of that nervous energy, you just released it and your body feels like you were stressed out. So it just, you get zen. Now I'm excited to go to a new destination because we're actually not sleeping at the hotel tonight. We're sleeping somewhere exciting, but I can't tell you guys. That's gonna be in a different vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know what your thoughts are about my tattoo. And I'm so sorry, it's a small one. But maybe next time I'll get a bigger one. And I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Eh.